Grace and peace, everybody. God bless you. Welcome back to Soteria Prophetic Ministries. <clears throat> I'm your host, Delisa Fields, and it's a pleasure and honor to be back with you. I want to apologize for the previous podcast. Um, it was entitled uh, Sensitivity of Seasons, and I'm going to attempt to redo that. Um, and I certainly appreciate each of you who have reached out to um, let me know that there were some technical difficulties. And I think I found out the problem. So, um, I had, well, anyway, I figured out the problem. So what I'm going to do moving forward, um, because many times when I'm recording the podcast, I'm on location. Um, so I'm having to, uh, pull up scriptures and things using mobile, mobile devices. And sometimes it's, um, interfering with the broadcast. So what I'll do, because I'm, I'm a firm believer in the word of God, those of you who know me, those of you who are my spiritual sons and daughters, you know, that I, I believe and I teach that every, you know, when, every, each time we minister, we should underline that in the word of God. Um, <clears throat> there should be scripture references, several, at least three. Okay. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. So that, that's what I teach in my ministry classes as I'm raising uh, ministers and even my own practice. My, my uh, best practice, um, is to use at least three scriptures. Um, when you're ministering. So many times when I'm ministering, I'm on location and I'm trying to, um, reference scripture. And so it's, it's become, it's been interfering with the broadcast. So moving forward, what I'll do is just go ahead and broadcast and then I'll come back and in my comment section, I'll feed you those, um, scripture references. So that way, um, you know, I feel competent in what I'm doing and you all can get a more comprehensive, um, understanding of, of the message without it being interrupted and also having the scriptural, um, foundation to back up, um, my point. So with all that being said, I want to, uh, reattempt the word on the sensitivity of seasons. Um, and, and of course I'm in a different mindset, so it's going to go a different place, um, than last week. But at any rate, um, my aim is to encourage and to, um, edify those who feel a sense of frustration with where you are. Um, I, I know many people personally are frustrated. They feel like they they should be doing more. Um, I ministered to one of my spiritual daughters last night and she's just frustrated. And I, I believe there's a consensus of frustration among many in the body of Christ um, because they feel like they should be doing more. They feel like, you know, God is disappointed in me and, you know, I'm, I've let the Lord down or I let my leaders down or, you know, they feel disappointment within themselves. And let me just, let me, let me just talk to you (laughs) like I did my spiritual daughter last night. First of all, you did not let God down. Okay. Because nothing is going to take him by surprise. God knows, God sees and God understands. Now that's not a, a, a token to do nothing and say, Oh, well, God understand. No, you do what you can do with what you have. When God told Moses, what do you have? God said, um, I, I've got a, a rod. What is in your hand? And he used what he had. So, you know, if God has equipped you with something, yes, he fully expects you to use it. But understand in that God, there's an understanding that God has, um, concerning the degree to which you can use the thing that's in your hand. If you're raising small children, then this may not be your season to run across the nations. This may not be your season to, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's just your ministry may be at home. And and I'll reference that to my own personal life. I started out in the school system in 2000. And I had several small children at the time. And a few years later, I had another one. And so I resigned because, you know, my ministry was growing and I'm raising children. And it was just a bit much. Um, So I, I was, you know, full-time pastor and full-time um, you know, uh, at, at, well, I wouldn't say at home, but anyway, raise my children. And, and so now here I am, you know, years later and I'm able to, to, you know, return to my career full speed ahead. And listen, I hadn't lost nothing. I'm telling you, I hadn't lost anything. So when you're faithful to your seasons, you understand there's a time, remember, and I gave you all the scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one, there's a time for every purpose, right? So, you know, for everything, there's a time just because God said he's going to do something in your life or he's expecting you to do, expecting something from you. Please understand that there's a timing that goes with that. And so if you're trying to do something um, without the timing, you're going to frustrate yourself. And I believe that's where a lot of uh, many people are right now. They're trying to do something and it's not the time for you to do it. Just because you receive the word that it's going to be done doesn't mean that it's the timing 
for it to be done. So you must know the difference. I often teach this to my spiritual children, especially my chief sons and daughters. Understand timing because God's going to speak to you and God's going to reveal things to you and God's going to, you know, reveal his, his purposes and intentions. But please don't get it frustrated. Don't think that you have to conquer the world in one day. You don't have to build a house in one day. You do what you can do with the season that you're supposed to do it in. And then, you know, and, and you, because there are some things that you have to grow into. Not just go into, but you have to grow into. So there are certain mentalities that you've got to uh, acquire and develop. There are certain mannerisms that you've got to develop and acquire. And, and let me tell you, one of the worst things, and we're seeing this kind of as a nation right now, is to be in a position that your personality doesn't fit. So you, you've got this, this uh, elevated position, but you act like a two-year-old. You understand what I'm saying? You, you've got all of this responsibility, and if you've got all of this uh, 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 you know, power, OK, that's been delegated to you. Uh, you've got all of this authority, but you have temper tant tantrums. You don't know how to speak to people. You don't know how to communicate. You see what I'm saying? So it's not just about going to the next level. You must also grow to the next level. Many of uh, the, those of you who may be in, in, in management, corporate America, I'm sure you can testify to people that have, you know, high ranking positions and their attitude is a hot mess. OK, because there's only but so much books can teach you life. There, there's there's experiential knowledge. All right. There's experiential knowledge, which is experience. And and so in some jobs, you know, listen, they, yeah, they want you to have a degree, but they're also looking at experience. And uh, gosh, that's a big one. You know, how long have you been functioning in this capacity and how well have you done? And I think that goes uh, that I think you can apply that across many, many areas. How long, how long have you been in this relationship and how well have you functioned? So many times, you know, the way that you conduct yourself, it can be an indicator um, of how well prepared you are for the next season. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So when we talk about um, being sensitive to your seasons, it's understanding where you are and accepting that. I'm not saying be satisfied with it. And don't want anything else. But I'm saying to accept where you are. This is where I am. If you are a single mother and you're raising, you know, children, that's your reality. OK, now I may not be the ultimate plan of God for your life, but that's your reality. And so you've received the word that God is going to open doors for you and God's going to send you to the nations or whatever. You know, understand in that don't get frustrated. And, and start to despise your children or despise your wilderness because you're so ready to go to this next place. What God did was he, he shined a light on your future and he gave you <clears throat> insight into where you're going. That's for planning purposes. Everybody knows to plan, right? That's for planning purposes. It does not mean, you know, just cut people off, shut doors and, and, and quit your job and sell your car and get ready to go to the nation. That's not, that's not even wisdom, people of God. He's showing you, okay, this is what I have for you. Um, <clears throat> this is what you need to prepare for. This is what you need to expect. This is what you need to, to, you know, target and, 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 you know, align your life towards because this is what's going to happen. Now, does that mean you totally disregard everything that's happening right now? No. Why? Because what you're doing right now is a part of the preparation process to get you to where you need to be. Joseph, case in point, you are called to be the prince of Egypt, the second in command of Egypt. Are you going to immediately leave your father's house and go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, hey, God said I'm supposed to be next in charge? No, Pharaoh would have killed him dead. Israel would have starved. And that would have been the end of the story. That's how many people have aborted their blessings and their breakthroughs and their promises is, is because of presumptuousness, overzealousness. And let me use the curse word ignorance. <laughs> people are ignorant. OK, and I don't mean ignorant as in stupid and, and, and unlearned. I mean, ignorant and well, unlearned. You, you don't understand the whole counsel of God. That's why the Bible said, if any man lack like, like wisdom, go ask God, Lord, you gave me this word at one of my daughters a couple of weeks ago. And she's like, mom, I got this word. I don't understand. I, you know, I'm, I, and so I said, okay, let me, let me pray about it. 
And, and let me just, because you're all over the place, your emotions are just, you know, you want the word to come true, but then a part of you is letting you know that something is a little bit off about the word. So you are, you, you are an emotional train wreck right now. So clearly, you know, you're not in the best position to hear objectively. Okay. So I said, let me pray about it and let me just see what God is saying. And so I gave her the response and, and that was that. So what I'm saying is, you know, when you receive the word, you know, don't let your emotions superimpose what God is saying. Don't let your emotions and your imagination and God forbid if you got a little bit of rejection mixed up in there and just take that word and do something weird with it. That God never intended. OK, take the word for what it's worth. Listen to the word. Write that word down. OK, and pray over it. Get some counsel on it. Get some, you know, some, you know, get some feedback on it judge it that's what the word when you receive a word judge it even when god gives you a word you judge your spirit make sure you heard god because i'm listen let me tell you something a lot of folks who say they heard god i, I it's got to be the god with a little g it can't be the same god that's in the bible it just can't be because some of what people say god said violates every you know violates scripture it's contrary to scripture god has killed people for doing stuff like that and i'm like you which god with you know it's it's important that you discern whose voice you're listening to all right. So that's that. So um, few points before I close out here, um, you know, understand it. Number one, you know, stop looking out your window at everybody else's house. Everybody has their season. Everybody has their time. Panina had her time to have children. Hannah had her time to have children. And let me tell you something. When you are in a season of God, where are you? And you're connected or, you know, dealing with someone who's in a season of overflow. It can be a very, very, very testing time for you. And we saw Hannah. She was frustrated. She went to her husband. Give me children. Give me. I mean, she, she, you know, you, when you see what other people are doing, it will cause it. Let me rephrase it. If you see what other people are doing and you allow that to, to, I guess, frustrate you, um, you can react emotionally. You can even let demons use you you know, to plot against folk and to talk about people. And don't do that because when you do that, friends, you only hinder what God is going to do in your life because you're showing God that you're immature and you really can't handle increase. You can't handle success. You can't handle promotion because look at how you're acting right now with what you got. You know, look, look at what you look at, what you're working with and, and look at you. You understand? I mean, you know, so a lot of times, you know, we say, oh, it's the devil holding me back to shut the door. And no, not always the case. Many times it's us. We, we, we just don't do what we're supposed to do, but yet we want God to just open the windows of heaven and God bless me, kick me, pour me, take me, throw me, use me. You know, we want God to do all of this stuff. And then we within ourselves, we're incompetent. Okay. So I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more later about sensitivity and seasons because I don't want you all to get frustrated. I want to encourage you that God is going to do what he said he's going to do, you know, flat out. OK, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. But, you know, you have to cooperate. You got to work with God. All right. You got to work with God. You have to cooperate. Um, you know, appreciate what God is doing in other people's lives. But that's them. That's their lane. You don't know what they sacrificed. You don't know what their process looked like. You don't know what they wilderness. You know, you don't know how, how many years they've sold, you know, in deed and time. You don't know. You don't know this story. All you see is the fruit coming out of the tree and the wheat coming out the ground. But you weren't there when they put the seed down. You weren't there when they trimmed and purged and burned the field. You weren't, you don't know. So it's really, you know, the Bible said he did compare, comparing himself to another is not wise. That's, a, it's a foolish thing to look at somebody's season and, and, and envy them and get mad at them. Number one, because you don't understand what they went through. That's number one. Number two, you only shortchange your own self. And you delay what God is doing in your life because you're proven to God with the attitude, with the envy, with the jealousy, with the temper tantrums. You're proven to God, God, I, you know, I'm not ready. Your actions are telling God that you're not ready. OK, so be encouraged. We're going to come back and finish talking about this. And um, but in the meanwhile, go and look at Ecclesiastes chapter three. Look at Joseph in um, Egypt. Look at Moses in the wilderness. Amen. And look at Hannah and Penina and just look at that in terms of seasons. And then we'll come back and wrap this up. All right. God bless you. Grace and peace until next time.